This is 61A lecture number one, the very first lecture video of fall 2016. Before I get started, let me tell you a little bit about these lecture videos. It turns out that lectures aren't a such a bad way for one person to explain things to other people, but they're not perfect. Sometimes lectures are too slow, sometimes they're too fast. Sometimes when you're listening to a lecture, you stop paying attention for just one minute to check your Pokemon or whatever, and then you can't follow what's going on for the rest of the lecture because you missed something important. Well, it turns out that videos fix a lot of these problems. So with videos, you can pause, you can rewind, you can play them faster or slower, you can even do wild things like pause, go to the course forum, ask a question, wait for a minute for somebody to answer that question, and then resume watching the video. Now, videos aren't for everybody. Some people prefer to come to live lectures because they find they're more interesting or engaging, and that is fine with me. But I do want to give you the option of watching videos instead of coming to live lecture, just because I think they're better. So in 61A, the way that works is that I will always release lecture videos like this one before the live lecture, and I'll make you a deal. Whatever I'm going to plan to say in live lecture will also be in the videos, so you won't miss anything by watching the videos instead of attending live lecture. Now, not every video is going to be newly recorded this semester. I reuse a lot of videos but only when I'm sure I'm going to say exactly the same thing as I did the previous year. If I decide to change any content, even a little bit, I record a new video. That way you always know that by watching the videos, you get the most up-to-date lecture content. So should you really watch videos instead of attending lecture? Well, it's up to you. I think a good way to make that decision is to come to at least one live lecture and see if you like it. And a good one to come to is the very first lecture. This semester, for the first time, I've reserved an extra-large lecture hall, Zellerbach Auditorium, because we have an extra-large class. So I would suggest coming to the first lecture. You don't have to. If you want, you can just watch these lecture videos, never come to a lecture at all and I promise you, you'll learn everything you need to know. But if you want to check out the live lecture experience, you should come this week uh, and see if you like it. You will probably experience some large crowds. There's enough seats for everybody, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be a little bit hectic. So please be patient if you come to live lecture. Try to be nice to your fellow classmates, and uh, we'll get everybody in seats and have a good time together. Okay, so you can watch the videos, or you can come to lecture. You really shouldn't do both, because I'm going to say exactly the same thing in both cases. If you've decided you're going to attend the first live lecture, I would recommend that you stop watching this video now, because everything I say after this point is going to be something that I'll also say in live lecture. Still there, huh? Well, in that case, I guess you're sticking it out for the first series of lecture videos. And so let's get on with the course content. Welcome to CS61A. I'm John De Niro. I uh, not only am a professor here at Berkeley, but I also started my research career here at Berkeley. I was a graduate student in the EECS department where I studied something called machine translation. That's a uh, writing programs that translate one human language into another, such as German into English. So after I graduated here, I went to Google to work on Google Translate. And I was there as a research scientist for about four years, where I was trying to improve the core translation technology, so making sure that sentences were translated more accurately than they were before, as well as a bunch of interesting user interface issues about how to make the results that are presented by Google Translate more useful to people. But as soon as I went to Google, I missed teaching, and I wanted to get back to teaching. So even while I was there, I would come and teach a course here at Berkeley. In fact, I was teaching CS61A, even after my first year at Google. I'd just come back to campus, 
once a year and teach this class, and I really enjoyed it. It was a smaller course back then, and then it grew and grew, and it became more and more fun, and I decided I should just do that all the time. So I have since returned to Cal full-time to be a professor here. So I've left Google, returned to my favorite place in the world, which is Berkeley. If you want to reach me, send me email. Or you can post on Piazza. Piazza is a handy course forum software that lets you post directly to instructors or to the whole class, depending on who you want an answer from. You can also talk to me in person. I know it seems like there are so many students in this class, it doesn't make sense to try to talk to the professor one-on-one, -on -one, but I really do like to talk to individual students. And uh, usually after the first couple of weeks, there's plenty of time and office hours for me to talk to people individually about whatever they want. So my office is 781 Soda, and my office hours are 11 to 12 on Monday and Wednesday. Or you can find appointments on denero.org meet. And if none of those appointments or office hours fit into your schedule, just send me email and we'll find a time to talk. So that's me, but I do not teach this course alone. I could not possibly teach this course alone. This course requires an army of people to teach correctly because there are many students and those students need individual attention. So I am supported by the CS61A community. There are 45 undergraduate student instructors, also known as teaching assistants, in this course. In this semester in particular, we have a ton of people who have taught multiple times before. Their students love them and they love their students enough that they came back for another round. So we have great experience on the staff. I'm really looking forward to working with them and I think you'll enjoy getting to know them as well. The teaching assistants teach the lab and discussion sections, which you'll attend each week. They also hold office hours in case you want to talk to them individually about whatever you want. And they do a lot of other stuff. They develop assignments with me, help me grade exams, and many other things. In addition, we're going to have 45 or more tutors and mentors. These people teach mentoring sections. None of you are enrolled in mentoring sections yet, but you'll have an option to join them later on in the course. And these are much smaller sections. So a normal lab or discussion section might have 35 people in it. A mentoring session usually only has four or five. And they're a chance for you to get together with just a few of your peers and someone from the course staff and work through problems so that you get extra practice and kind of receive suggestions from somebody who has more experience with the subject matter. So it's a really great way to learn in these small group settings. You'll learn more about them in the next couple of weeks. Tutors also hold office hours and do lots of other stuff. In addition, we have more than 200 lab assistants. So they will be in your lab sections helping answer your individual questions. And the last part of the 61A community is what makes it the most special of all, your fellow students. Now, there's a big number of students in this course, absolutely. But they're not just any people. They're Berkeley students. They're great students. Folks who will work hard and support you if you're willing to work with them. People often ask me, what are your tips for doing well in 61A? And the first one I always mention is that if you can find a study group, of people who are your fellow students to work on problems in this course with, you're going to have a much better experience than just trying to do everything on your own. Now, how will you meet your fellow students? Well, you'll go to lab and discussion section. You'll meet them in office hours. Um, it's not unusual that if you just run into a random person on the Berkeley campus, they'll be enrolled in 61A. So you'll have plenty of opportunities to meet them uh, you don't have to go to lecture to do that, but you do need to go to all the other parts of the course. So what are the parts of the course anyway? Well, there's lecture. As I said, videos will be posted to cs61a.org before each live lecture, and I'd recommend watching those, but you can come to live lecture if you want. I mean, I'll be there. It'd be a little weird if none of you came, so maybe, you know, volunteer one or two people to come hang out with me. But uh, you can also just watch the videos. But lab section is something that you need to attend live each week. 
In fact, I'd say it's the most important part of the course. It starts next week, and in lab section, you'll come into the labs in Soda Hall, where we have a bunch of computers. You can bring your own computer too if you prefer, but you're going to be working on programming exercises, practicing what you learn in lecture, and making sure that you understand uh, how the ideas that we talk about in lecture actually apply to writing programs. There's also a discussion section, which I'd say is the most important part of this course. Discussion section will actually start this week. Don't know what discussion section you're enrolled in? You can find that out by looking up the section number of lab and going to cs61a.org slash weekly, which tells you all of the discussion numbers and where they meet. So if you're in lab 102, that means you're also in discussion 102, and discussion 102 is taught by Eric Nelson in 310 Soda from 9.30 to 11 a.m. on Thursday. So please make sure you start going to discussion section this week. This week is a little bit unusual. We're not going to focus on technical material. Instead, we'll focus on making sure that you meet some of your classmates, get your questions answered about how this course works. There are also staff office hours. That's probably the most important part of this course. They start next week, and it's a place where you can drop in and ask individual questions and get individual answers about whatever you want. Homework help, or understanding lab, or discussion, or lecture, whatever you want. Now, I listed all of these as the most important part of this course, and they're all true, but for different people. So you're not going to know what works best for you, whether it's lab or discussion or office hours, until you try them all. So please do that and figure out what support in this course works best for you. There's an online textbook, composingprograms.com. It's free. I update it. If you notice any problems, please send me email. Um, there will be weekly homework assignments. There will be three different exams, two midterms and a final. And there will be four large programming projects in addition to all this other work. Now that's a lot. And that's because learning computer science takes a lot of practice. So I need to give you a lot of practice and make sure that you do it. And that's why I assign so much work. What I'd like to happen is that you're efficient in going through all this work. When students get stuck for five hours on the same problem, they may not be productive anymore. They may not be learning anything. They're just getting more and more frustrated. That's not how it's supposed to work. You know, thinking about something for a half an hour or an hour is a wonderful way to learn. But at some point, you just need a little bit of guidance, a nudge in the right direction. And so, we have lots of optional special events in this course to help you complete all of this work. In addition to lab and discussion and office hours, we're going to make sure that you have chances to ask questions, both online and in person, so that you can um, not only solve all the problems in the homework assignments, but understand how to get to those solutions so that you can solve similar problems too. So please, 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 if you're going to take this course, participate in it. Do all these things. That's how students have had good experience in this course in the past.